Howdy, we are Kristen Sanchez and Desiree Fawn with Reverb, and we're here to nerd out on microphone polar patterns, operating principles, uses, and common microphones to achieve your specific goals. People often refer to microphones as a kick mic or a vocal mic, but what does that mean? For that, we would need to discuss polar patterns, which refers to how a microphone picks up sound from different directions. The three main polar patterns are cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight. You can use polar patterns to prevent unwanted noise, noise bleed, or just capture the room. We're gonna start with the cardioid polar pattern. You can remember its name because it's shaped like an upside down heart. They capture sound from the front, but they reject sound from the rear. Most dynamic microphones use the cardioid polar pattern, which is the most common polar pattern and it's used for most applications. This polar pattern responds much more aggressively to proximity effect, which means it's gonna pick up a lot more low frequencies or bass frequencies when the source is much closer to the microphone. You can use cardioid polar patterns to prevent unwanted noise and noise bleed, which is why it's most commonly used in live applications. It's great for close miking multiple instruments, but isn't necessarily ideal for room mics. The next pattern to talk about is figure eight, which is also called bi-directional mics. You can remember its name by its shape, shaped like a figure eight. This polar pattern picks up sound equally in the front and the rear, but not as much sound pick up from the sides. With that, it's commonly used for dual podcasters or backing vocals. They can share the same microphone using each side of it. And it's also commonly used for stereo recording techniques. With that, it's all gonna save someone money having less mics. The last polar pattern to discuss is omnidirectional. It picks up sound equally from all sides all around. With that, it's got a circular shape. Omnidirectional mics can capture sound equally, so that means it's good for the whole drum kit, maybe the whole band, or maybe just some room ambiance. With omnidirectional polar patterns, picking up sound equally from everywhere, it's not often used in live sound applications. But it's great for a podcaster that turns their head while speaking a lot. Proximity effect and off access won't be an issue with the omnidirectional mic. Today we're gonna to use the Shure KSM44A to demonstrate the three major polar patterns. You'll hear the audio image change as we switch from each pattern. The other super important thing to talk about is a microphone's operating principle, which is how it converts energy. The one thing all these mics have in common are the diaphragm, but you need to pick your microphone according to what it specializes in the frequency it's most sensitive to. The ways that a microphone can convert its energy is three ways, dynamic, condenser, and ribbon microphones. Dynamic microphones are usually used in the cardioid pickup polar pattern. So that means they don't have a switch like most large condenser microphones do, which enable them to switch up the patterns. They're super rugged. They're so rugged that the United States hired Sure microphones for all their World War II military needs when it comes to microphones and headphones. Yep, built to last. Dynamic microphones do not need external power, also known as phantom power. Dynamic mics being super durable, you can find them in most live sound settings. You'll see them on guitar cabinets, uh, drum kits, or anything super loud. Dynamic microphones include Sennheiser MD421, EVRE20, and for the price conscious, Shure SM57 and 58. The 57 and the 58 are the same capsule, but the 58 has a foam filter and grill design. When the rain washes you clean, you'll know. Here we have a condenser microphone. They are not structurally rugged and not built for live with it being pretty sensitive. Don't drop these mics. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Not the condenser. You're gonna find them in studios all across the country. The one thing is large condensers, the diaphragm is an inch or more. Small condensers, the diaphragm is a half inch or less. Large condenser microphones usually have the great option of switching up polar patterns. They also have attenuation pads, usually negative 10 or 20 dB. And they're typically side address. So you'll talk into the side versus the front like you would a dynamic. 
Large condenser microphones have a bigger capsule, so they're gonna capture bigger, low frequencies. So a large diaphragm condenser would be ideal for a bass guitar, a bass drum, orchestra. Vocals, definitely. Brass instruments. There are a ton of options when it comes to large diaphragm condensers, but here's a few examples. AKG C414 XL, Neumann TLM 102, and for the price conscious, Audio-Technica AT4040. Small diaphragm condensers address from the top of the microphone. The best thing about them, though, is that they have an excellent transient response, which means they're going to provide an accurate representation of the frequency. Good uses are for hi-hats and all cymbals, acoustic guitars, strings, piano. They also have a much more consistent frequency response when using the polar pattern switch, especially compared to a large condenser. Small diaphragm microphone examples include Shure SM81, Neumann SKM184, and for the price conscious, Rode NT5. Ribbon mics are the last to discuss. They are named after its ribbon appearance, which have that natural figure eight polar pattern. So inside this microphone, there is an aluminum alloy ribbed, very thin foil that's in between two magnets. It's very close to electromagnetic speakers and how it performs. Ribbon microphones are technically dynamic microphones, but they are not as rugged. They are very sensitive and could be damaged if not handled properly with care. Be very careful with your plosives or large bursts of sound or air pressure. Also, do not store them improperly as in how you would with most microphones laying flat. They need to be stored in upright position. Ribbon microphones have the most accurate sound reproduction and it kind of brings that warm vintage character to vocals, horns, overly bright brass instruments. It's really versatile. You could use it as drum overheads. The pro of these ribbon mics is that they're gonna have a wide frequency response or a higher fidelity sound and also a wide dynamic range. They're very warm and rich, so be very careful with EQing. You gotta cut off that mud range. You better represent the accurate highs and lows. The one thing is they're a little bit less sensitive when it comes to frequency response, so you're gonna have to really kick it up with that preamp to properly gain stage. Ribbon microphone examples include the Royer R121, which is the most commonly used ribbon microphone in most studios. Audio-Technica AT4080. Shure's KSM313, is a very rugged ribbon microphone, unlike the rest. If I had to narrow it all down to just a few important points, just remember that dynamic cardioid microphones are best for live because they're rugged, cheap, less sensitive, and do not require phantom power, but are also used in the studio because they can pick up loud sources pretty well. In studios, engineers usually prefer condenser microphones because of the many polar patterns, the attenuation pads and its options, and superior sound reproduction. And also some cases, ribbon microphones for that high fidelity. There are no strict rules, it's just the starting guide. Always use your ears, have a good time while you're doing it. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to catch you next time.